Are you calling me a female dog? I guess we jumped to conclusions whole. Did you just say that there was something wrong with the paternity tests? I'm coming with you. There is something about him that I don't trust right now. You should have prayed for your baby's mother, instead of totally rejecting her. I'm never far away, Yoella. Gabar. The truth is, well... I just want to work out my salvation right now. And how much will that cost? How far along are you with this baby? And you are probably thinking the same things as them, huh? Of course not, hun. Yeah. You think I'm a bum. A mental case. Huh? Does a part of that discipline process include that ministry program with Ernest? And what makes you think I don't have concerns about you, being committed, and not forgetting about me, from thousands of miles away, huh? I have more to be concerned about than you do, though. Track her phone down. Paying her phone, you say? Julisha is not a placeholder. I know what everyone is thinking. I think the only person that you need to focus on is yourself, your soul, your heart, and what Julisha might be going through with you. But you rigged up all of those paternity tests somehow. Interesting. The grocery store, you said? Yes. I don't know how she stays open. We are pressing charges against Evelyn in this hospital. Abba. Please give me the strength and courage to walk onto that porch again. Wipe your tears. And you go talk to her this time. Father, please treat me as one of your sons and reprove me. No matter what we do in his set apart, Holy Spirit, it must not be done through a spirit of fear. Thank you, Julisha. Thank you, Rahab. All praises. All praises. Hallelujah. Tell my father and Sarah that I love them and I'll see them soon. Everyone here is excited to see them. And beautiful, I miss you so much. You know? I'll let them know. I'll call you when we get to the airport. Alright dear? Yakobi, are you there? Yeah. Just call me when you all get to the airport then. Fine. Love you. Shalom, dear. Love you too. Shalom. Everything alright over there? No. I can tell that something isn't right with her. Interesting. Well, maybe, if you learn to bridle your tongue, apply wisdom to situations here as a leader, and stay off the radar, then, you won't have regrets concerning your marriage? and your assembly here. You know? I am looking forward to getting back there. Are you really looking forward to going back there? So, while we're talking about going back and such, what about Elder Elijah? Wow. The last time you and I were here, at this diner, it was a different place. And now, Moriah, once again, you are avoiding the topic and questions about Elijah, your husband Han. Moriah? Let me show you a picture of my family. I look just like my father. But everyone says I look like my mother's twin, you know. Well, I look just like my deadbeat father. Both of us, me and Yoella. 
we both look like him. But, we look like our mother as well. Oh hey there Zaid. So who does Zaid look like the most? Oh that's an easy one. Unfortunately, I look just like Reggie. Right mom? Reggie? Zaid Gulshan. Do you not know what to say? But that's what you've always told me. That I look like Reggie. My father. I'll be back a little later than anticipated this evening. I have some legal matters to sort out as well. Is there anything I can get you, my queen? No, babe. I think I'm just going to... Wait a moment. Is something wrong? So, does one of your plans include a stop at the jail? Yes, hon. Omar. Babe. But we talked about this. And you promised that you would not go to the jail to talk to her. I don't know why I'm struggling with this so much the past week. I guess I just need some sort of closure, Dana. But we agreed that you would try to seek closure at the courthouse when she goes to court. You're right. I agree to that. To keep my promise. My covenant. My obedience to what his spirit said. Omar, there is something about you going down to that jail, that detention center, speaking to her, that will open a window for the enemy. And as a pregnant woman, I'm here, on bed rest now, having to war in the spirit, to fight off that energy you bring back here, you know. Yeah, well, I definitely don't want to put you, or the baby at risk. Right. And I sure miss, when you used to say our baby, and our baby boy. You know? I don't say that anymore. Really? Well... Ever since you heard Dr. Pepper and Edward talking about the altered paternity test files, well... No. You don't. You don't even say baby boy anymore. It's like you've lost your excitement and forgot the promises of Yah that he showed you babe. My mother did enough damage. And though I do forgive her, I can't forget. And you don't need to be reminded of things right now. Just not this week. It's a rough week for me, hon. I can tell that you need answers. Closure. Peace of mind. I get that. Just promise me that you will keep your promise and not go down there. Please? Yes, hon. I promise. Sorry ma'am, but your phone will not be compatible with the NPC system requirements. The only thing that we can do is give you a temporary upgrade. But eventually, you will have to buy a new phone. I expected you to say that. Alright then. Thanks sir. The most high yo will work it out. Well, take care. Sister, you're a believer? A daughter of Yah. I sure am. And you? I'm not a daughter of Yah but... I see you have a sense of humor, even through these challenging times. It's nice to meet someone that gets my jokes. Proverbs has a verse that says, laughter does good, like a medicine. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22. A joyful heart. Right. May I ask what your name is sister? Take a guess. Hua. Hua. You mean, like Hua, in the Garden of Eden. Eve. Right. But she ate the forbidden fruit from the forbidden tree. She was the mother of mankind. The original from which other women came from. The mold. Right. See? It's all about perspective and how you look at things. Adam is responsible. No thanks. Pick another name. No. I'm serious. Talitha. How did you guess that? So, I wanted to let you know that we have affordable phone options that meet the NPC requirements without the tracking device. I don't even have the money right now. I just quit my job last week. 
Are you looking for a job? We are hiring. And the owner is a believer, and he really tries to operate his store in righteousness and fairness. Really? He's off today, but I can give you an application and complete an interview with you. Thank you Heavenly Father. Thank you. I am so glad that I remained obedient to his voice and came in here. Go. Go. But I don't even have the money to get my phone fixed yet. Trust, Trust in me. me. Abaya, order my steps today. Just as you said you would, please. I will trust in you. I will. Thank you, Father. Here I am, putting limits on what the Most High can do in my life. Based on what I don't have. Instead of what He has. It was never about what I have or don't have at the moment. It was about what He has, and what He can do, at the moment. Hallelujah. I know, right? All praises. Wow. Isn't He good? I guess we better not put limits on his blessings. Obedience is better than many things we could even try to offer. Yep. Along with more worship and praise, because he is worthy of that and much much more. Hallelujah. Let's get your application filled out. And we can prayerfully go from there. Alright? Amen. All praises. I'll be right back. But you've always told me I look like Reggie, my father. Boy, if you think this is funny or something. What? Did I say something wrong? Oh, Sister Rahab's husband. He's named Reggie. We call him Reggie too. And this wasn't good timing, huh? <laughs> Zaid, I don't know what type of spirit is working through you lately. But Father, I ask that you would help Zaid see his ways, and bring deliverance to his heart. Right now, in the name of Yeshua. My bad Auntie Rahab. And sorry Mom. I apologize. I guess there's something going on between the three of you, that I don't know about? My bad. <laughs> My other dad, David is coming to pick me up and take me business shopping. Just let me know when he gets here. I'll step out of the room. Rahab. Sister. I don't know what's got into him. Someone is working wickedness into my son somehow. And I'm sorry about what just happened. That scared me for a moment you know. Zayd is acting like a complete jerk lately. In a minute, I'm going to put him out. And he can go live with David. Wow, I'm really sorry sis. Are you good? Yeah. As long as my husband isn't Zaid's father I guess. Zaid's father is named Reginald. Everyone used to call him Reggie. And since he never came back home, and refused to ever be a part of Zaid's life, well, Zaid refuses to call him his father. He just refers to him as Reggie. I'm sorry sis. That must be David, here, to pick up Zaid. Shalom. Shalom, David. How's it going, Ray? One day at a time, you know. Everything good with you? By his grace and favor. I'm well today. Hallelujah. Thanks for asking. Right. So. I came to take care of some business with Zaid. I have to take this call. Can you let Zaid know I'll be in the truck? Sure. Not a problem. Just don't bring him back. Alright? Alright well. I'll let him explain himself to you. David. Shalom. Zaid. 
David is outside in his truck waiting for you. You and Andre had look like sisters. Maybe you should investigate who your daddies are you know? See you later mom. By Mrs. Rahab. He's crying out for help Julisha. Trust in me. But we do look like sisters though. We look like we could be related. He's right. Julisha, Zaid will be all right. Actually, the truth is, is that? My father was rarely around. Barely a part of my life, you know. Every weekend, he traveled for work. And, it really took a toll on my mother's well-being. And he would always promise to come back and spend more time with us, but... Something was always more important. And Zaid never really had a father. His father left us when Zaid was a toddler. I am so sorry to hear that Julisha. It's a part of life. This cycle has to stop. That's why I'm concerned about Zaid and this baby situation. He's becoming a jerk. Like his father was after I gave birth. Prayer works. And you are a praying woman. The Most High will hear your prayers. Right? I can imagine your concerns. My father only came home on the weekends and put us through trauma. I might as well be like Zaid and just call my own father by his first name. Well, let's focus on forgiving our fathers and releasing them so that we can be forgiven and free. You know, I agree with you. It's time to release this mess and pray against this possible generational curse. Father, I ask that you forgive me for holding grudges all of these years and give me the strength to release my father Joel for his transgressions. Yes, Father, I ask that you help me to forgive my father, Joel, for his sins. Joel? Joel? Julisha. Julisha. I'll make it to your next game. All right, dear? But this is my last game, Dad. You've got to be kidding me. Trust in me. Rahab, I promise that I'll be home with you girls next week. I have a lot of work meetings out of town. You know how it goes. All right, dear? We are sisters. Every time I bring up Elder Elijah, you avoid the question. Yo Ella, Elijah is under a tremendous amount of stress. Therefore, he hasn't been able to process what he is feeling in those moments of stress. But we are prayerfully working our way through these hardships. We'll get there, you know. Just like how you and Elder Jacobi pressed through and found the healing and deliverance in our Heavenly Father. We'll get there sis, just like you did. He's starting to abuse you, isn't he Sister Moriah? You and I both know the beginning signs of abuse. Moriah, you are a counselor Han, and you have experience with these things. You know the signs. You know the red flags. You know the spiritual journey. When I look at you, and hear the words that you say. You sound just like me. You look just like me. As if. We share the same neglectful father. And the same abusive husband. Moriah. Right now, in this moment. You look, just like me.
You don't have to suffer for 20 years like I did. I'll be alright sis. How can I get on that airplane, knowing that one of my dear sisters may not be alive the next time I see her? Don't you think that's a bit exaggerated? Not at all Moriah. I'm praying for you dear. I'm praying for both of you. You and Elijah. But the verbal, emotional, and physical abuse is not our Heavenly Father's plan for our lives. The greatest commandments are to love Abiyah, and love others. Period. There is absolutely no scripture that justifies an abusive relationship. None at all. I know. But I'm not in an abusive relationship. It's just the stress that's getting to Elijah right now. Father, help me to remain calm, in your set-apart spirit Yah. Please. I understand your frustration. It's all right. I apologize for being so emotional about this. But... I'm listening sis. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 says that Abiyah knows the plans that he has for us, not evil but peace, to bring us to an expected end. Amen sis. I agree. Peace. Not evil. Ephesians chapter 5 reminds our men to love their wives' bodies, just as if it's their own body. Amen. Hallelujah. It says, In the same way, husbands should love their wives, as their own bodies. He who loves his wife, loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as Yeshua does the assembly. Because we are members of his body. Yoela. I know. I know Ephesians chapter 5 verses 28 through 30. Very well. I counsel many sisters about this very same thing, many times each month, and now, it's time to remind yourself of that same counsel dear. Matthew chapter 22, verse 37 through 39, Yeshua tells a man about the greatest commandment in the law. Love Yah with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Verse 39 continues on and quotes our Redeemer as saying, and the second is like it, love your neighbor as yourself. Trust in me. Oh, exactly sis. Love your wife's body. Love your wife as if it's your own body. And love others as yourself. I think you were connecting the dots, aren't you sis? You know, my husband promised that he would never do this to me. But, I'm starting to see how his verbal and emotional abuse is turning into a control over my body. And he's taking out his stress on me. Marriages, relationships, friendships. All of these come with a level of challenges. But love should never hurt, destroy you, or cause you to stumble, sis. Moriah, you don't have to hurt. You don't have to walk this journey alone either. Don't be another Yoella. Twenty years, sis. Twenty years. Three years, sis three years. Protecting his reputation. Protecting his name. Blaming myself. Allowing him to blame me. Patiently waiting for a change to come. Patiently waiting for the pain to go away. Lies. Not communicating. Addictions. Gaslighting. Manipulating. Using scripture out of context. Emotional relationships with other women. Comparing me to other women. Hiding fresh bruises and old scars. Hiding emotional scars and tears. Not calling me. Calling me names. Ministry before family. Can't even have a family.
still need to know. How did you guess my name correctly like that? You saw it in my phone or something, huh? Actually, after talking to you for a while, it felt like I had met you before. Like we've met before. You know? I had that feeling too, when I first heard your voice, but I just don't remember if I've met you before. My name is Gabar. Gabar? When I first got integrated from the special education classrooms, you were so supportive and welcoming while others avoided me and left. When I had the accident and was badly injured, needing multiple surgeries, losing my confidence and strength, you came to the hospital with your mother, just to say hello and pray with me. Wow. My brother. You are a walking miracle. Where have you been all of this time? It's a very long story, but I'll share it with you one day very soon. I'm so glad to see you were well, Gabar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I promised that if I could ever find you again, if I'm in a place in which I can bless you, that I would bless you as the most high sees fit. <laughs> Talitha, I promised that I would bless you. And I believe that today is that day to fulfill that promise. Wow. I don't know what to say. I really don't expect anything, Gabar. I'm just so happy to see that you recovered and you were able to work. Praise Yah. Hallelujah. One thing that I always remembered about you is that you've always been a man of your own word, keeping your word, your promises, and always telling me not to block my blessings. And I definitely will keep my promise and not block my blessing here. Can I give you a hug? Of course you can. When are we going to the airport? Ain't it almost time to leave? Where's Yoella? I'm not getting on that plane without her you know. She'll be back soon sir. She had to say her goodbyes to certain sisters and sort out some last minute business beforehand. She'll be here on time. No worries. Well alright then. I guess. I'll go have me one last meal in this house before I leave. I can't wait to go live with Jacoby and Yoella. Yes! I've got it. I'll make her a sandwich for the flight, that's what I'll go do. I'm gonna take good care of my Yoella and Sarah when we get there you know. It's gonna be mighty nice to be back with my family again. Yes sir. Praise ya. I'm glad you can have. He just left while I was in the middle of a sentence. So you think that's funny huh? Alright Sarah. Laugh. Enjoy. He does that to me all the time. Welcome to the club. He means no harm. Yeah well. Come sit with me while we wait on my mother to get back. You were so cute when you were confused. Malik. What's on your mind? We get to do video calls. Plus, Aren't you coming out to visit us when the investors come for that meeting in a month or so? Yeah. You want me to stay here and wait with you? Is that what's on your mind? No, Sarah. Like I said before, I'm proud of you for making this decision, keeping that promise you made to the Most High, and trusting in his process for me and you. I'm in total peace about your flight, your transition, and your new beginnings over there. And I'll miss you. A lot. Trust in me. But time apart will help you so much. And that's all that counts in the end. Your well-being. Thanks Malik. I love you so much. I love you too. Always. But something is troubling you, isn't it? What's on your mind? I can handle it. Just tell me. The Most High is with me and I pray that he covers this conversation. So, what's on your mind Malik? Just tell me. 
Tanika. Tanika. Yeah. I don't understand. Is there something I should know? Trust in me. Zid, are you sure this is the store? I know the building owners very well. But, there's a lot of negative history related to this unit. I'm positive. This is it. And I can see the lady inside, that several people have been complaining about. There she is right there. It's an easy takeover. That's Sister Marianne. Well, whatever her name is, this store won't be in her name for long. If we get to it first, before other investors grab a hold of it you know. And how do you know all of this? Well. I don't know how she stays open. I will never go back there again. Never. She called the police on her customers after that earthquake. I've never stolen a day in my life. Ever. She's the worst part of this community. The senior citizens are trying to get her thrown out of here. Her judgmental personality makes it hard to cope with life. But it's the most affordable place in town, and the food is fresh. Clean. And it helps local farmers stay afloat. But she is ratchet. Despicable. A devil in disguise. Mrs. Shrew is overcharging my mother for packaged food, just because my mother has on some makeup, some pants, or something. That ain't right, man. I want to take this store away from her hands. We can get her out of here, with your connections and favor, and money. I know that we can do a lot better than this old hag. She's gotta go. Zaid. You are no better than her, my man. No better. What do you mean, Elder? You're just as judgmental and a menace to society, as she is son. Look at how you talk to your mother nowadays. You are running around forgetting who you are. Who are you Zaid? A child of the Most High Yah. Hold your head up and say it. A child of the Most High Yah. That's right. And what does Revelation chapter 1 verse 6 say? It says something about our Redeemer making us kings and priests. Quote it. It's in you. Take your time. Let his spirit work it out in you. And he has made us kings and priests. Hallelujah. Zaid, you've been avoiding fellowship and studies with us every week now. And there is a spirit working on you in a negative way. I can see it. Yes, Elder. I'm just going through some things, I guess. You don't have to go through them alone. All right. Thank you, Elder. I know. But... I just don't want to burden you, or any of the brothers with my spirits. So, you've decided to just take one for the team, and suffer in a corner. I get it. But this time around, it's making things worse. For you, and your mother, and everyone around you. So what should I do? You can start by repenting. Then, you need to start keeping those promises that you made. Promises? Zaid. Do you know why I asked you who you are? Because I forgot who I was. Acting like a jerk. Not being kingly. Not carrying myself like a priest. Not walking like a child of Yah. Right. And a king should be wise, operating with authority and power. A priest? Well, they make vows, or in a dark, to the Most High. And they pray. They are prayerful. They have access. Intercede. Promises. Vows. And a child of Yah, is a son or daughter of the Creator Himself. The inheritance. A descendant. And should look like his dad. And I've been taking out my stress, on everyone around me. I guess just like this Marianne lady, who owns this store hall. I understand. And that's why I pray for you, and remain patient. Giving you some space, and time, to walk out your own salvation you know. Thank you Elder. But Zaid, like you already said, you are leaving a negative impact on your own mother now. You are breaking the promise, the kingly, 
priestly, set-apart vow, that you presented before Yah Almighty. I promised to respect her. I vowed to the Most High, to honor her, and those around me. Father, please forgive me. In the name of Yeshua. Right Zaid. And what's the consequence of willfully breaking that vow to Yah? Well, I think it has to do with my life or something. Exodus. Oh yeah. Right. Exodus. Chapter 20. Verse 12. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be prolonged in the land Yah Almighty is giving you. It's the first commandment with what Zaid? It's the first commandment with... With a promise. Right. It's the first commandment with a promise. Yeah. You have an honorable mother. And you need to do better at honoring her, my son. Yes, Elder. We both need to honor her, as a child of Yah. You know what I mean? Yes, Elder. And I'll take a moment, right now, to repent from my heart, and not compare myself to Marianne, as if I am better than her. Please forgive me. I was wrong in that moment. I understand. And likewise. I'm not trying to offend you, or cause you to stumble. Just showing love and discipline. Because I care. You know what I mean? For sure. Thanks Elder David. Take some private time right now, with the Most High. And I'll go in here, and have a talk with Sister Marianne. Father willing. Your spirit be with me. And don't forget, the face, of your Father. Don't forget who you are. Don't forget the face of your Heavenly Father. See Him. Through Yeshua. See Him. Within yourself. I promise. I won't this time. I promise. Oh. What's up? I didn't expect to see you in here. How's it going my brother? If you are looking for the elders, they went back to the hotel to wait for the van to come take them to the airport. All right. Thanks a lot, brother. Hey, are you coming next month for the investors conference we're having for the men? No, I decided not to risk it. Risk what? My wife is pregnant. She's getting closer to her due date. And we both agreed that it's best if I don't travel too far during this time. Oh, I see. Your wife's got you on lockdown, huh? It's that type of marriage. Yes. A loving, respectful marriage. Right. A marriage where she influences all of your decisions. What's your point? She influences your emotions. Tells you what to think. Where to go. Who to talk to. Eventually, you won't even need to stand up to urinate. You are out of order. And whatever entity sent you, please note that I am canceling the plans of this entity that's operating through you, in the mighty name of, you probably call her Queen Too Ho. The father's people were never meant to have queens. Most of the queens in Bible history are wicked. Yep. And we were supposed to be ruled by his instructions and his spirit. Not some queen. But that's what you and I fall into. Yep. Letting these women control things. Just to keep them happy. Yep. Think about it. You can't even be yourself anymore. Can you? With such great wealth and authority. Huh. Freedom. Poof. Out the door. No freedom for you, bro. You used to be the man. Yeah. Sure was. But now, you're all soft. Flexible. Reputation lost. Now, you wipe from front to back. And to top it off, you're becoming the pit of everyone's jokes as a man. Leave. If she really trusted your spiritual authority, then, you should be free to go wherever you want, when you want to. I thought you had the power to rebuke entities, Omar. Huh. So, what are you avoiding? Go where you want. See who you want. Get the closure you say that you need, and still keep your promises. Fine. But you, brother, you are the head, not her. And you have power to rebuke spirits. Just be a man. I already said, leave. You're a weak man. If you're even still a man anymore, huh? 
trust in me. I promise. I'll keep the safe space shelter in mind. I won't forget that I have a place to go if it gets bad. Bad. So, in your mind, it's not bad enough yet. Am I right? I guess I just meant, if I feel unsafe, I made the same mistake. Protecting his reputation. Not telling anyone. Holding grudges. Blaming myself. And unfortunately, Elder David became my coping mechanism. I'm so sorry about what you endured. I can only imagine how you struggled, and the guilt that you carried. You as well sister. And I don't want you to fall into a hidden comfort like I explained many months ago at our last talk. Yeah. I started eating so much back then. But hallelujah. The Most High delivered me, and, even Elijah helped me get out of my negative way of coping. Yeah. Just be careful. Because the same person who helps you heal, may also be the same one that hurts you again. It's a horrible cycle sis. You make marriage sound so hopeless and helpless. Not at all. With the Most High Yah, all things are possible. Matthew chapter 19. Hallelujah. If Elijah is delivered, and can help you in that healing process, then all praises for sure. I'm just saying, that it takes two to make it work. Not one. Two. Two, not one alone. I understand. And we were not created as some sacrifice for emotional, mental, or physical abuse, just to help our men make it into the kingdom. I hear you. I receive that. Marriage comes with a few challenging moments. But, financial and medical struggles, do not help along this journey. The loss of a child together, addictions, lack of communications. They can either make or break a relationship you know. Oh believe me, I know all too well sis. That's why his set depart spirit, his Holy Spirit, must lead us. I believe that the Most High Yah will remain as a foundation for me and Elijah. I just pray that he listens to his spirit and learns how to cope with our personal challenges, before I have to move out or something. I'm just trying my best, to keep my promises, my vows, my covenant. You know? Me too. You are not alone. Just remember, it takes two willing vessels, to make it work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh wow. I'm running late. I have to get back to the house before we head to the airport. Let me pray with you one more time, before I head out. Absolutely. Wait. What's the matter? Did he know exactly where you were coming today? Maybe he's just coming to say goodbye. Yo Ella. I don't know, if you've noticed, but... He's not your biggest fan anymore sis. Why? He thinks you all are looking down on him and... Here he comes. Hey hun. Sister Yoella was just about to leave for her flight. Have a safe flight. Harriet Tubman. And she kept her promises. Honey, we were just about to pray. Sounds like I showed up just in time, huh? Right, Sister Yoella? I just sent you more than 30 family photos that I had from my cousin's social media account. He has an extensive family tree saved online with documents and photos going back to the late 1800s. Dad never told us about your mother. And I refuse to let Zaid repeat this same cycle, in the name of Yeshua. Sis. Well, I guess I mean my literal sis now, huh? I ain't mad at ya. That's what our father used to say. You're right, hun. Wow.
And you never met Uncle Ben either. Or Lori. This is unbelievable. Oh. The airport. I almost forgot about their flight today. I promised to be there early. What time is it? Two. Two? All right. Plenty of time. Julisha. You've got to come with me to the airport. Change your clothes. Or whatever you need to do. Okay. Come with me, to say goodbye, to Yoella, Sarah and the elders. And reveal to her, that I'm her sister, in person ha. Huh? Is that David? What is he doing? Neck exercises, ha! Huh? I see that Michael Jackson has come to shop here. With his red thriller jacket. Well, a warm shalom to you too, Sister Marianne. I guess you came here for my eyeglasses to complete the whole outfit, ha! Huh? How can I help you, Lady Killer? Yeah. I get a great deal on fish and produce from Isaac. Your father-in-law. That poor man. You took his daughter away from him. And now, he has no one, but his boat, and the sea. And that hypocritical ministry that Yoella runs online. Separating women, from good Bible-believing men. Good men of the faith in Christ. And that nappy-headed fornicating gluttonous boy who can't stay awake long enough to know what's going on in the rundown apartment. Yeah, I saw the both of you, outside just now, talking about something. And I know you are up to something, David. Amen. Leave. Because I'm too holy for this mess. Dropping off spirits in here and all. Good riddance. So how did it go? Well. I heard, and saw, all that I needed to see. Let's do this. Omar. There is something about you going down to that jail, that detention center, speaking to her, that will open a window for the enemy. She warned me about entertaining spirits, and opening up windows that should remain shut bringing negative energy home, and setting myself up for a spiritual attack, that she has to fight off, with that baby inside of her. I did it again. I said that baby, and not our, baby. My, baby boy. Brother, you are the head, not her. And you have power, to rebuke spirits. Just be a man. Right. I am the head of my household. And I have spiritual discernment. I am equipped to fight in the spirit, and protect my household. I have the authority through Yeshua's finished works, and I should be able to go where I please, and come back home, knowing that I am not weak. I am strong. No. I have a right to find closure, and to be the spiritual leader in my home, the way I was created to be. Wow. Heavenly Father, it never crossed my mind, that Gabar might not wait for me. Or always be there, ready for me. I've really taken him for granted. All of these months. Father, thank you for allowing me to be single. A single woman. And confident in your protection over me. You alone, are so amazing and compassionate. So, Abiyya, I ask, please, confirm to me, what I should do about this situation. It just feels like I have to make some type of choice about helping the ministry, or, moving forward with Gabar is more than just friends and all. Please forgive me, if you've already told me what to do but. I've been so distracted and I just couldn't hear you clearly or something. 
But I'm listening now Father. In the name of your Son Yeshua. I'll patiently wait, for confirmation, a confirmation that only your Holy Spirit, your Ruach can provide. Hey girl. I was cleaning the break room and found your phone on the table. It was ringing like crazy. It must be important sis. Oh wow. Thanks so much Doshi. Blessings be upon you. I have to get back to work. Father, please continue to bless her. And show me how to be a better person in her presence. Help me not to hinder her. Just because I didn't see the plan for her life. Didn't mean that you never had one for her. And just because she left the room, doesn't mean her positive impact cannot be felt. So please, bless her beyond measure. Because she is trying. And quiet as kept, she might be the only female in my life that I can remotely trust. I've come back to ask for your forgiveness for sleeping with Ernest back when you were in a relationship with him. I'm renewed. I'm born again. I'm free. I already forgave you. I release you. Which means, if I see you on the street, I won't punch you in the face. I can't trust anyone. Period. Oh wow. 11 missed calls from Ernest? Father, is this part of your confirmation process that I just prayed for? And what's wrong with Tanika getting married over there? Sarah, he's one of the elders. So what? He's a bit older than her. No big deal. If the Most High placed them together, then... Are you jealous of him? Of course not. Then why are you so concerned? She's in her 20s. She promised she would remain single. Remember? No. I don't remember that part. Sarah, it's not like that. I'm being serious. And I'm being serious to Malik. Who did she make that promise to? It's not like that. I guess she made that promise to the Most High. A vow. I see. I was just hoping that when you get there, that you could talk to her about this whole marriage thing, and see what's going on. Just promise you will have a talk with her? I can't promise you that I'll talk to her about her engagement to the Elder there. The scriptures say that we should be careful about making promises that we can't keep. Numbers chapter 30 And Matthew chapter 5, Yeshua says to say a simple yes or no and that anything more than this comes from evil. No false vows, you know? Amen. But... But I will pray for her. And let our sisterhood naturally build you know. But I can't promise you anything like that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, what's his age? 84. I promise. I will talk to her about that. You feel me? Something is off. Just promise you'll ask her about it. All right? Yes. A simple yes on that for sure. Shalom, Mama. Shalom, sweetheart. Malik. Shalom. Are we ready? Beyond ready. Me too. Hallelujah. I'll let Granddad know that you are here and ready. I'll get the car loaded up for you now. Malik. Yes, Ami Yoela. Thank you, Tonarabba, for being there for Sarah. For being obedient to the Most High Yah. For protecting us, when we didn't even know, that we need such protection. All esteem and credit to the Most High Yah. Forever. 
and ever. Keep watching him hold. Come here, please. Elijah's wife is in danger. Hold. Son, get her to that shelter when it's time. You'll know when it's time. I've been watching Elijah ever since he signed that form for Marianne down at that store. Those spirits have been attacking him. What for? It forced him to lie for her, in order to get food for himself as well. He just couldn't wait, and trust the Most High. It wasn't like we weren't bringing food and money. And he was so prideful about allowing Mariah to go back to work. Trust, trust in me. me. He's being set up. Blackmailed. Attacked. And Carmen keeps going to the house when Mariah isn't there. Tempting him. Threatening him. Here. Give this note to David. All right. I promise. He's not coming inside the airport, so I won't see him again. So. I promise. I'll make sure he gets your note. I better go ahead and get the car ready now. Thanks again, Malik. All praises. I just got a last minute call from one of the brothers, who needs a ride to the airport. Yes, Elder. Do you need a ride back home or something? After I prayed and repented, well, I just want to go for a walk and probably catch the bus later on. All right, well. Enjoy your day off. I'll see you tomorrow, Father willing. Thank you, Father. Trust, Trust in my love. I promise to treat everyone right. And I promise not to follow in the footsteps of my earthly father. Only through your spirit and with your help. I promise to follow you. Hey, Zay. Tammy? Is that you? Of course, that's me. You look... Different? Yeah. But after the prayers I've been praying just now, everything, and everyone, looks different to me. All praises to the Most High. Interesting. Tammy, listen please. I want to apologize, for the way I treated you the other day. And how I talked to you. I'm still unbelievably disappointed and I don't trust you but... I haven't been in a good space. Interesting. Because I was just on my way to place more spells on you at the tech store, but I saw you standing over here. I heard one of your prayers of repentance. So I asked the Creator, to confirm that he is real, and if he would receive me too, if I repented. And I heard a voice, within my heart, that said, Trust in me. My love. Trust in me. My love. I heard that too. Hallelujah. So when you apologized, I literally felt and saw the love of Yah in your apology. But I've done so much wrong and I have so many curses upon me. So many obsessive thoughts controlling my every move. I don't even know where to start. His love is real. His love is everlasting. His son's love covered my sins. His love is taking away my sins. His love convicts me. His love spoke to me. His love is real. His love is real. And I am convinced that you are real. Trust in him. He really is. And he is good. Hallelujah. No more spells. No more tricks. No more schemes. I just want to be free. Then let's work on your repentance, and removing people, things, and places, from your pathway. And well, begin to close up windows, and then I access an authority over you. In the name of Yeshua. But you gotta believe and be sincere about it. You know? You are not hopeless. I, am not hopeless. And I am no better than you. It's not about being better than each other, but it's about being who he created us to be. We have to let go of those who we've lost. Those people and things just weren't meant for us. That time has expired. You know? And we can't obsess over it. 
It's destroying our lives. And the lives of others. I understand. And I'm ready. I really am ready to release the idea of Malik. My mother. My sins. But I'm scared. I'm nervous about this. It's hard, just letting go. Me too, tire me. Me too. But, he is able to get us to that place where we just hate sin. The taste of it. The smell of it. The consequences. The separation from our Heavenly Father and that dark dreadful feeling. Being lost. You know, we just have to get to that place. But how many more accidents, mistakes, challenges, have to happen? before he has our full attention ho All right, Mr. Ali. They just transferred her to the holding cell, so that you can talk to her. Just give me a moment. Well, that's not how this works, sir. You only get 10 minutes with her. And your time is ticking as we speak here. I understand. Well. Look sir. I see this all the time. You believers come in here, with these weird convictions. And you want to talk to the person who wronged you. I get it. You want them to repent, before their trial. You've got this weird guilt on you huh? And your rookie cops, just know everything huh? I'm here to gain closure. And that's it. Period. Right. Well, are you ready? I knew I shouldn't have come down here. So now what? You're going to cause strife in my household by telling Dana I came down here? I won't tell, if you don't. But she's going to find out either way. Whether it's through me, or her mother. Didn't you think about that? I don't owe you any explanation. I'm the head of my house. Dana just has some overly cautious fears about me picking up spirits while talking to her mother down here at the jail. Trust, Trust me. You. I can handle this. Like you said, you don't owe me any explanation. So now what? Huh? Oh boy. I feel so bad about taking these pictures of you down here. Really? Message sent. Two check marks. Just waiting for them to turn green. You know what I mean? Fine. How much do you want this time? 100. Not a problem. What's your cash app? 100,000 you silly man. Learn to keep your promises, Omar. This is just a learning lesson for you. I promise to never set you up. I apologize for the past. But at least you know what it feels like to be followed the way that you followed Dana. Just do the right thing and go home to your wife and baby. Please, just trust the words of a righteous wife over the babbling fool that was sent by the enemy. Meanness is strength under control. Remain the humble, strong man in Yah that you were. Those are the qualities of a real man Omar. Read your word and avoid this temptation to talk with Dana's mother. All right? Honor your promises. Honor your marriage. Stay in unity. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, the insurance company will have the pipe fixed, right? Stacy, the ministry program doesn't have earthquake insurance. And this pipe is an urgent matter. We had to send all of the children back to the shelter. We will be forced to close this place down if we can't raise the money in two days. So, I was praying that you could convince your father to send a donation right away. Convince him, huh? For the children. Well, this is it. Malik. This is really it. You know? It's been a long journey. 
Hey, maybe someone will take our story and make it into a movie. I'm going to miss your jokes, your smile, your kind heart. And there is nothing about you that I won't miss. Just make sure that you come to be with us, like you promised. And make sure that you continue to follow the word of the Most High, like you promised. I promise to wait for you. And I promise to come to you. Father willing. Yah willing. Sarah, I love you. I love you too, Malik. Do you have your sandwich that I made you, dear? Dad, I ate that thing already. I smashed it. And it was good. Thank you. Good. It's going to be a long flight. You're going to need it. Thanks for the red elder, David. The van was full. But you took a moment out of your day to get me to the airport on time. Not a problem, brother. May the most high give you peace on this long flight back overseas. Shalom Malik. Shalom. I'm going to go sit with Sarah for a while, until you all go through the security checkpoint. Sounds like a plan. I'll see you at the checkpoint. Honey Yoella, something is bothering you real bad. Dad, I'm alright. Just a few things on my mind, concerning some people we are leaving behind. I know you all think I'm getting old. My brain ain't functioning like it used to and all. But, the truth is, I just miss you real tough you know. We'll all be together now. I promise you that. Hallelujah. I think I'll go sit over there and make sure they ain't kissing. You come in? I'll be over there shortly. I'm waiting to see if my sister shows up. She said she's on her way and it's important. I'll be by the escalators, waiting for her to come down. You promise? I promise. Alright. I'm mighty proud of you, Sarah. Dad, but I'm not. Sarah. Bro, why don't you come into the airport and pray with all of us before we board our flight? I made a promise to myself and to someone else that I would let them walk away in peace. <laughs> See, as a man, you can't let no woman dictate your actions, my brother. Don't you have the authority, the strength, and the ability to rebuke and slay demons? It sounds like you're trying to avoid a deadly disease or something. And it probably ain't even that serious. It's serious enough, that it can open up a door, that I'm trying to keep shut. And that's the problem. You think you can keep a door shut? You can't keep a door shut, that the Almighty can open and close when he wants to. Sometimes, you need to face your fears, your struggles, head on, and put some closure to whatever mess is troubling you. Just let me walk away in peace. But you keep responding. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Just come in and say goodbye to everyone, and let the Most High work it out. Whatever you think you're facing. It's no big deal. It's a blessing in disguise. Shalom, my brother. I've gotta go. Excuse me. It's your decision, man. Fine with me. Just drive away with regrets then. Shalom. I think we're in the wrong section of the airport. This is the right place. But... We're probably just earlier than expected. I'll just send her a message. They should be by the escalators soon I guess. This is so exciting. Right? I can't wait to surprise her with this. Shalom. 
I just got your message. I just wanted to let you know that I might not be coming out to that investors meeting overseas. Oh, well, that's too bad. I'm going to ask Julia to marry me. That's a big decision. But, has she even committed to you yet, David? No, she hasn't. Why couldn't you tell me this later on? Oh man. What's wrong? Hey, let's go get one of those hot cinnamon buns from the food court while we wait. Now that sounds good right now. Let's go this way. All right. But the food court is that way. He promised to be transparent with me about this. This is blasphemous. Now I understand why you hated me at first. No, I'm not feeling her. Ray, it's really none of your business who David hires. Yo Ella, you're so gullible, uptight, and boring. She has no sense of fashion. Her skin is too light. Shalom sister Julisha. Shalom brother. Is there something wrong? Is there a reason Yo Ella's sister keeps staring at me? She's been staring at me all night. All through the dinner, until now. Ray, stop staring at them. You can be so rude sometimes. And you can be so soft and weak sometimes. He could have been my brother-in-law you know, if you didn't marry Jacoby. It wasn't just about Reggie. No. You hated me, because you wanted Yoela and David to be together at some point. Hate, is such a strong word. I could hear you through those bushes you know. I'm sorry Julisha. Well. This isn't the first time. But I can promise the Most High that this will be my last time. Julisha, wait. Did you know that Julisha just ran out through that exit? Did you even know that she was here? Something is wrong. Here comes Rahab. You need to go find Julisha. David, go find her. David, goodbye, forever. Because it's the right thing to do. Forever, David. Please. Please. Just say it. Mean it. Forever. I can't make a promise that I can't keep. I'll never see you again. So just say it. Because it's the right thing to do. Because it's the right thing to do. Goodbye. Forever. Forever. Goodbye. Forever. Forever. I can't lose my place in the kingdom over him. I'm sorry for all of those years that I provoked you. That I teased you about this. Marriage is a covenant. 
a promise, a vow, a beautiful union of two people, and let no man tear asunder. What was so important that you needed to tell me before we left here, Rahab? I'll go check on Sarah. Did you bring Julisha here to start drama, Rahab? Not at all. Then what's going on? What did you need to tell me? What is it? 